What's happening everybody and I'm taking my video content on YouTube to a whole nother level now because we are going to be building some real world generative AI Python programs. Yeah! Yep. And in this first video we are going to be receiving a full list of items which we want to iterate through individually and pass it through AI and save all of our responses into a CSV folder. So for more details what we are going to do is that we are going to have a long list of wildlife animals where we want to give AI a hard card coded prompt first followed by each individual animal in that list and we want the top three facts about each animal and we want to save that into a CSV. So if you guys are ready for this please don't forget to like this video, pop me something friendly in the comments, share this with your friends and family and if you're enjoying this kind of content and want to learn more about it please don't forget to subscribe. Now without further ado enough to really chat 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 let us get started. All right, now firstly, we're going to be connecting to a AI model, which is literally giving GPT 4.5 a run for its money. But GPT 4.5 is paid, correct, to get API access. Now, but with Google's Gemini new API, it is absolutely free. So we're going to be passing all of this data through the API of Google Gemini or the new Google Bard. But for developers, you'll know it as Google Gemini. And we're going to get our response. So to get our hands on this API key, what you want to do is head over to your web browser and navigate to AI dot google dot dev you'll see instantly which will pop up on their lovely website which they've just recently created it's really really cool i must say you will be able to get your api key in the a in the google ar studio so click on that and you'll see that now we will be redirected into the makersuits.google.com now you'll see that you'll be able to prompt and whatever but we're not going to be prompting here we just want our api key so that we can create our script within vs code so if you see on the left hand side if you click on get api key you will be able to get your API or create a new one. As you can see here, I do have one created, but obviously I'm not going to show you for security reasons, but you do just want to note that and copy that down as we do need to configure that within our script. So once you have your API key ready, let's head over to VS Code. But before we create any script, we do want to isolate our new project and our, for our program. So to do that, let's create a new folder. I'm just going to create one on my desktop and I'm going to name that real will underscore ai underscore one then once you have created your folder we can now open it within vs code so in my case it's on the desktop and it is real world ai underscore one awesome then you'll see vs code reload and you'll see your explorer on the left hand side if you do see that with your new project folder open we can head over to a new terminal now what is a terminal a terminal is exactly like you opening up command prompts on windows or your terminal within Linux. So now in our terminal within our project folder, we want to create a Python virtual environment. So to do that, you want to type Python space dash M space VENV and then the name of your virtual environment. I'm just going to call it VENV as well. Then you can hit on enter and just give that a few seconds to load. You'll see as it's loading, you will see a new folder be created in your main folder, which we created earlier when we opened it within VS Code. This is where all of our Python uh, dependencies and everything will be stored and not just stored within the whole computer so then there's no confusions between our different projects all of the scripts which are installed uh, through pip install in this project will be isolated within this folder now once that is complete we need to activate our virtual environment to do that you want to type the name of your virtual environment forward slash scripts with a capital s forward slash activate now what that does is that it basically we're telling our terminal to navigate into our virtual environment head over to scripts and hit on activate. Now, once it is activated, you'll see the name of your virtual environment in brackets on the left hand side of your terminal. Once you have that, then we are ready to start downloading and installing the library, the Python libraries, which we need to make this program possible. So the first one which we need to do is to pip install the Google Genitive AI. So for us to do that in our terminal, you simply want to type pip install Google dash generative AI. All right, depending on your internet connection will depend on the speed on how quickly this will be able to download and install, but it really shouldn't take too long. Also, now once that is downloaded and installed, we can now create our new Python file because the other library which we need to import is CSV, which comes default within Python. So now for us to create our new Python file, we just want to add new on our main project in Explorer on the top left hand side, and we can name our file main.py. What I have realized in VS Code is when you do create a new file, sometimes it does put you directly in your virtual environment. Then you just want to move that script out into your main project directory. Once it's in your main project directory and no longer in 
uh, your virtual environments. If it is, then we can just close our terminal and we can start scripting our Autumn Python program. So let's start importing the two libraries which we need. So the first one will be CSV. So import CSV. And then we can import Google.Generative generative AI. And we will import that as Gemini. So let's quickly configure our Google Gemini API before we forget it. So firstly, let's do that. You can do that by simply typing Gemini.configure, open our brackets, and here we can pass through our API key. So you want to type API underscore key, and in here, two single inverted commas, and there you want to paste in your API key. So once you have pasted in your API key, now we can create our two functions which we need. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take this long list of um, items that we want to pass through AI and we're going to save it into a CSV file first so then it can iterate through each one. So we're going to create a function for our program to be to be able to open up a CSV and iterate through each item in a list. And secondly, we're going to create the function for our program to create a new CSV and to add the new individual items with the two new columns with animal and facts into a new CSV without overwriting each one in the CSV. It will be appending it to a new line. So let's get started on those functions. So the first one you'll say define read underscore animal underscore name. Then with our two little dotty keys and in our function we're going to iterate a blank list or an empty list so we'll go animal underscore names create that variable and we'll give it an empty list which is our square brackets. Now once we have the list to store all of the items from the CSV into this list now we are ready to open our CSV file. So now we're going to type with open and in there we're going to pass our file name which we'll give to it later on. Then we need to give the mode for our CSV to read. So it will be mode equals to two single inverted commas. And in there you want to put R for read. Then all of our data is on a new line. So you just put new line equals to two single inverted commas and leave that empty. And we need to give the encoding of our CSV folder or file, which is default UTF-8. So we'll simply type in coding equals to our single inverted commas UTF-8. Eight. Now, once we have opened our file in read mode with all of the dots on a new line with our default encoding, we want to open it as file with our two little dotty keys. Now we can create a CSV reader to read our CSV file. So to do that, we'll create the new variable reader equals to csv.reader and in there we'll pass the file. All right, I see that we have an error for our file name here because in our main function, we haven't passed the file name. So in our main function, we will pass the file name and then they will get rid of that error there. Now, once we have our CSV reader ready, then what we need to do is that our first heading on our file, which we are going to have, if I see my notepad here, it's animals. So there is a heading. So for us to skip our heading, what you want to do is that you want to type next, open our brackets, and we'll put in reader. So that will skip the first one. Now we need to iterate through each row, but we want to check if that there is a value or text, then it will continue. So there will be a little bit of error handling. So to do that, what we want to do is that we'll say for in reader, which will go through each new line as an individual one. And we want to say if row, so if there is data in the row, then what we need it to do is that we want it to append our animal underscore animal names dot append and where is our animal data it will be in the first row so let's actually create our csv file here i'm sure that will give a little bit more easy understanding so let's create a new file in our main project and let's call it animals.csv okay and then let's just paste all of the data which we have in our text here the full list into our csv file now that would make a lot more sense so now if you have a look here what we are doing is that we are creating a csv reader then we're telling it to skip the first line. Why? Because we have the heading animals and it's not an actual animal itself. It's just a heading. So we're telling it to skip that. And then we're telling it to iterate through each and every row. And if there is data on the row, then we want it to append the data for the new CSV file. And we know that there is only one row of data. There isn't a second one. So what we do is that we say dot append and we open our brackets and in there, we put row 
And it's not just one individual item, it is a list. So we'll put row, square brackets, and it is the first column. Remember, Python doesn't use one. One is basically two because zero is a number. So you put row as zero. Now, once we have all of our animal names, which we need, we want it to return the data. So you just want to indent back to where it, where we opened with our with open file. So you want to indent back there, and you just want to say return animal underscore names awesome so now we're going to receive all of the animal names which we can then save into our new csv file and which we can give through to our generative ai model so now our first function is complete let us create our second one which will append our data to the csv file instead of overwriting it with the new data it's just going to add the new data as new rows so let's create that function so we'll de define that as append underscore two underscore csv Okay, now in this function, what we want to do is that we want to pass the file name, all right? So we want to be given the file name to get all of the animals. So then we want to give it the animals as well, the animal names. And then we also want to give it the facts, which we have received from our AI. So we need all three of those data to have a complete CSV, and we're happy with all of that data, so we can do what we need to with all of that new generated data, with all of the facts and so forth. So I'll just put in there facts as well. And then our two little dotty keys. Now we want to open, this will be for our new CSV file, we want to open it and append our data to that CSV file. In other words, add our data as a new row to that CSV file. So we're going to open it, so with open, open our brackets, and we'll say file name, comma, and then the mode is going to be different, so it will be mode equals single inverted commas, and there we just put an A for append. Then we need to say that we want all of the data on a new line. So new line equals to our two little single inverted commas. And then don't forget, we need to give our encoding as well. So it will be encoding equals to UTF-8, not nine, eight. Now, once we have opened that, we want to open it as file. So open as file with our two little dotty keys. Now, once we have opened our new file, we want it to write the data. So now we're going to, instead of creating a CSV reader, we're going to create a CSV writer. So we'll create writer equals CSV dot writer. Open our brackets and we'll pass the file. Same as, the, as above, just instead of reader, we're doing it as a writer where it will be a new CSV file, which it will create for us. Now, once we have created our writer, now it actually needs to write that new data to the CSV. So we go writer dot right row and in there we want all of the animals which we returned here and which we are passing through here in our main variable append to csv so we'll write the the row as a list because it's multiple items so our square brackets and in there we will put animal and we will put facts right so our new csv will first give the animal and then the three facts which it has generated from the ar which we're going to pass it through just in a few moments. So now we have completed our two functions. We have our function to read our CSV and to add new data to a brand new CSV. So now once we have our two functions, we can head back indent right back to the first line and now we can retrieve a list of all of the Google Generative AI models and what we want to do is that we want to select the very first Google Gemini model which supports generative text. So to do that, we're going to create a new variable called models. And in that variable, we're going to list or receive, retrieve a full list of all of the models. So you have to open your square brackets and we'll say M for M. This is also in the Google uh, developer documentation, which if you would like to find that yourself, then you can head over back into ar.google.dev and in there next to where you get your api you'll be able to read the api docs but i'm going to show you exactly how to do it in this video as a practical as well so as i said we went m for m n then we want to go into our gemini model and we wanted to dot list all the models open and close our brackets and then we want to, the first generative text model so if single inverted commas generative or generates text with the capital T so so we want the first model which can generate text and we want the first supported model so we go in m dot supported underscore gener generation underscore methods all right so now we're going to get a full list of all of the supported 
Google Generative AI models which can generate text. And now we want to select the very first model. So to do that, we're going to create a new variable called model. And there we're going to pass the variable which we created above models. And we will give it the very, where in our list, we want to give it the very, very first model which can support generate text. So that would be zero and not one because Python starts with numbers at zero, remember? So out of our list now, we can put dot name. Okay, so this will give us the very first generative text model. And that's the one which we have selected in our single model variable over here. Now we have all of our, our three functions ready for us to start using. So we can read a CSV, we can add data to a CSV, and we can create a response from Google Gemini's generative API with awesome, awesome AI and humanly impossible speeds. So anyway, let us continue. So now what we need to do is that we need to read all of the animal names and we need to pass the animal name CSV because our script doesn't know where the data is or the CSV file is with all of the data. So to do that, what we want to do is that we'll say animal names equals to read underscore animal names. And in there, we can give it our CSV file. So to give the relative path of our CSV file, you want to right click on it and you want to copy relative path and just paste it in there. If it is in a different folder, then you would see basically folder dash and then your script. But it's just in animals.csv. Now we can write the code for us to create a new CSV file to write all of that new data to. So we'll go with open, open our brackets. And in there, let's call our new CSV file animal underscore fun underscore facts dot CSV. Okay, which will be the file name which we are now passing through. Then we need to give it the mode. So the mode will now not be equal to read, won't be equal to append, we want to write it. So write starts with a W, so you just want to put in mode as write. Then we want all of the data on a new line again. So new line equals to our empty inverted, single inverted commas, and then our encoding, which will be equal to our UTF dash. Eight. Awesome. So now we're opening up a new CSV file, which is going to create and it's going to write all of our data onto a new line using the default encoding UTF-8. And we want to open that as file with our two little dotty keys. Now we can create our writer to write our data to our new CSV file. So you go writer.csv.writer. And in there again, what do we pass through? Our file or whatever. Got writer equals, not dot, writer equals csv dot writer now we want our new data to be written but we also want headings in our new csv file so let's do that first so we're going to say writer dot write row and in there i was we open our brackets and all of our data again remember it's a long list so we need to pass everything as a list so in our brackets you want to open our square brackets single inverted commas and our first column will be animals or animal rather that sounds better because it will be individual. And then secondly, we want our second column to have the title fun facts. Now, once we have our heading on our new CSV file, now we're ready to iterate through each animal and give a hard co coded prompt before it gives each animal because we want the top three facts. So to do that, we want to say for animal in animal underscore names with our two little dotty keys. And now we can give the prompt for our Google Gemini API. So we'll simply type prompt equals to, now we're not just gonna pass the animal name, otherwise what is the AI gonna know what to do with the animal name? So firstly, to give a hard coded prompt first, you wanna say equals, you wanna put F, open our double inverted commas, and then we can type provide me three educational unpacks a part and we can put a dash and then now we can give it the animal so you put our our curly brackets and in there you put animal so now what this is going to do is going to iterate through each and every animal and pass the prompt provide me three educational facts about and then the animal which is on that specific row and iterate through each one until that whole list is completed now according to the google gemini documentation we need to give a completion variable where in there we generates our text so you say gemini dot generate 
underscore text and open our brackets. Now in our brackets, we need to pass the model which we have chosen. So we've chosen the very first model which can generate text. So it will be model equals to model. Our prompt which we want to give it will be equals to prompt. And then we're going to give the maximum amount of output tokens where the max at the moment is 2024. So you'd simply want to type max output tokens equals 2024. Awesome. So now once it has passed all of that data through the AI, now we need to save all of these results. So to save it, we need to append it to our CSV file. So we simply do that by typing append to CSV because we created a function on how to append to a CSV over here. So we'll say append to CSV, open the brackets. And what is the first thing which we need to pass? We need to pass the file name. So our file name will be animal underscore fun underscore facts dot csv and in our csv what else do we need to pass in our function we need to pass the animal and then the facts now our facts come from our completion results so we put a comment first we need to give the animal as well as fun facts which will be the completion result so to do that you simply put completion dot result Okay, I see that we have a bit of an error. Ah, yeah, we didn't close our single inverted commas here. We gave our animal and then our completion dot result, which will give us our result from our prompt, which we have given over here for the three educational facts for the certain animal. Then that single one needs to go. There we go. That's looking a lot better. Now our script is basically ready to go, but now we just want to know when our script is complete that it must just print us a message. So to do that, we indent right back to the beginning and we can say print, open our brackets and double inverted commas and we can say all facts have been added to each animal and saved in the new CSV. Boom, now we can save our script and now we are ready to give it a run. So let's hit on run. See your terminal will pop up. Let's just give it some time. Let's keep. Ah. Oh, of course, I haven't given it my API key. So just give me a second. Let me just load my API key here. All right, now that I've added my API key, let's try that again. Okay, our terminal opens up. It's always a good idea to keep your eye on the left hand side to see when your new CSV file has been created. So we see that the new one has automatically been created already. So we know our script is on the right track, but we see in our terminal, our script isn't quite finished yet. So let's just give it some time. While we're waiting, please don't forget to like this video, pop me something friendly in the comments and share this with your friends and family. And don't forget if you're enjoying this as much as I am, please don't forget to hit that subscribe. Awesome. There we go. So now let's just check in our animals.csv file. We got a hundred animals, right? Or 101, including a heading. So now let's go into our new CSV file. Boom, there we go. We got our three facts for each and every animal. And the last one needs to be, let's see, uh, African Jacana and an African Jacana. Boom, there we go, guys. Now there's an awesome real world example of how you can use AI in humanly impossible times with prompting as well, which is absolutely insane. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to like this video, pop me something friendly in the comments, share this with your friends and family, and a subscribe would motivate me like crazy. Until the next video, cheers.